Welcome to Via Mathesis. I'm Stephen Anthony Orzel, and we'll be continuing on our video series for the ancient philosophy of mathematics. In this fourth video, we'll be looking at which of the subjects in the quadrivium should be studied first. To see this, we'll take a look again at Nicomachus of Gerasa and his text, The Introduction to Arithmetic. In the previous video, we saw that the first few chapters of the Introduction to Arithmetic define the quadrivium and also explain why arithmetic should be studied first. Nicomachus goes through this in a dialectic fashion to show that if arithmetic were to be wiped out, then it would also wipe out all the others along with it. But if any of the others would be wiped out, then arithmetic would still remain. So let's go into that. Again, we're taking a look at Nicomachus and the intro to arithmetic. So here's what he says about why arithmetic should come first. Which then of these four methods must we first learn? Evidently the one which naturally exists before them all, and is superior and takes the place of origin and root, and as it were, mother of the others. And this is arithmetic, not solely because we said that it existed before all the others in the mind of the creating God, like some universal and exemplary plan, relying upon which, as a design, an archetypal example, the creator of the universe sets in order to their proper ends. But also because it is naturally prior in birth, inasmuch as it abolishes other sciences with itself, but is not abolished together with them. So it is with the foregoing sciences. If geometry exists, arithmetic must also needs be implied. For it is with the help of this latter that we can speak of triangle, quadrilateral, octahedron, icosahedron, double eightfold, one and a half times, or anything else of the sort which is used as a term by geometry. And such things cannot be conceived of without the numbers that are implied with each one. For how can triple exist or be spoken of unless the number three exists beforehand, or eightfold without eight? But on the contrary, three, four, and the rest might be without the figures existing to which they give names. Hence, arithmetic abolishes geometry along with itself, but is not abolished by it. And while it is implied by geometry, it does not it's itself imply geometry. And once more, this is true in the case of music, not only because the absolute is prior to the relative, as great to greater, and rich to richer, and man to father, but also because the musical harmonies, diatessaron, diapente, and diapason, are named for numbers. Similarly, all their harmonic ratios are arithmetical ones, for the diatessaron is the ratio 4 to 3, the diapente that of 3 to 2. The diapason the double ratio, and the most perfect the didiapason is the quadruple ratio. More evidently still, astronomy attains through arithmetic the investigations that pertain to it, not alone because it is later than geometry in origin, for motion naturally comes after rest, nor because the motions of the stars have a perfectly melodious harmony, but also because risings, settings, Progressions, retrogressions, increases, and all sorts of phases are governed by numerical cycles and quantities. So then we have rightly undertaken first the systematic treatment of this, as the science naturally prior, more honorable, and more venerable, and as it were, mother and nurse of the rest. So we're beginning here 
with looking at numbers and arithmetic for the same reasons that Nicomachus gives. And we'll do a couple, um, the next couple videos in this series are going to be looking at uh, the philosophy of numbers and things like that. So just to tell where we're kind of going, um, I'd like to show you uh, how to meditate with numbers. Some people have asked me about um, meditations and things like that. So what I'd like to build up to is how we can begin doing this kind of meditation, and we'll begin that with numbers. So in another text of Nicomachus, this one has not survived, Theology of Arithmetic. Nicomachus gives the meanings of numbers, viewing numbers as symbols and giving meanings associated with those, qualitative descriptions, that we can see the numbers for their uh, characteristics, sort of as their personalities. Once we begin to understand the meanings of numbers and begin to meditate on them and internalize those meanings, that leads to a kind of perception that we see things going on around us that we didn't see before. We see process and unfoldment happening around us that we didn't notice before. We understand where things come from and where they're going. In that sense, it leads to things like prophecy and divination. So, it's very important also for all the other work we do with sacred geometry and the meditations we'll be doing with geometry exactly for the same reason that Nicomachus describes here. We're not going to get very far in sacred geometry without learning numbers and arithmetic first. So that's where we're going and we're going to look at what's in the theology of arithmetic next and I'm going to give you the uh, some keywords that you can use to associate with with numbers. These may not have actually been in Nicomachus, but the same spirit of it is what I'll be giving you here. Now, um, we do have a theology of arithmetic that's attributed to Iamblichus, but it's not the original text of Nicomachus. It's very clear when you read this that it's um, some sort of um, student notes possibly taken at one of Nicomachus' lectures. May or may not have actually been Iamblichus. Iamblichus came much later than Nicomachus. Uh, well, not much later, probably about um, another 100, 200 years or so. And uh, we'll look at that next, and I'm going to give you a construction project you can do to carry out these meditations and begin to internalize these meanings of numbers and number symbolism. So that's what's coming up next, and I hope you'll join us for that.